Good afternoon. If you watched my last video, thank you very much. If this is your first time watching, I'm very excited to have you. Our first question comes today from Mr. Brian Yowell of Denver, Colorado. He has a 1972 280 SE 4.5, and he writes, Pierre, after replacing my um, valve guides, adjusting my valves, replacing my injectors, my engine computer, my injection trigger points, and going through my ignition system, my car still started with a hesitation and a cloud of white smoke. Can you please help me identify what the issue is? After studying his email and asking him a few more questions, I had given him some items to focus on. These items included injection trigger points, the condition of his valves post-valve job, and specifically fuel injectors. Now, while all of these things can be a factor, the fuel injector that he found that was bad was the cause of the problem. This is a really good tip for those of you who own cars with Bosch D Jetronic injection, which include the 280SE 4.5 and 3.5, the 450SL and the 450SEL and SE up to 1975. When people experience these problems, they should be looking for drops in fuel pressure, difficulty starting, and obscene amounts of smoke while starting, as well as fuel dilution into the engine oil. These symptoms can all be signs of a bad injector, and even if your injectors are new, they could still be a problem. Speaking of things that shouldn't be a problem but are, my next question came from Mr. William Morris of Seattle, uh, Washington, who has a very beautiful dark olive 1969 220D. Mr. Morris writes, Pierre, my rear end of my car is sitting low. This car only has 18,000 miles on it, which he was able to establish through the car's wonderful documentation from new. Why is my car sitting so low in the rear? Now, initially, he had brought up the discussion of differential mounts, subframe mounts, and shock absorbers. Unfortunately, Mercedes does not supply the early differential mount for this car, but really, the focus on subframe mounts and differential mounts causing rear suspension to sit low can be exaggerated. While differential mounts can fail at 200,000 miles, it's best to look at shock absorbers. In his case, his car actually had a leaking shock absorber on the right side, and on the left side, we are not quite sure, but we think that the shock absorber has also collapsed to a degree. Either way, the specific problem with his car is probably tied to the shock absorbers, and we will let you know in our next video what the issue is. For those of you that have 115 or 123 cars that are sagging in the rear, Shock absorbers are a good place to start, but you should also look at rear subframe mounts and rear differential mounts in higher mileage cars, and the spring pad on top of the coil spring on any car, regardless of the mileage. These pads can collapse if the car sits for several years, creating a loss of about 10 to 15 millimeters in the rear in really bad cases, and creating a deficit in the way that the car handles its loads when you put stuff in the trunk. Our third question that I'm going to address came from my good friend Lars Morgan, and this has to do with air conditioning specifically. Lars owns a 1977 240D, and he was dismayed to find all of his Freon was leaking out. If you have a Mercedes that has a York air conditioning compressor, which on a 123 series car with a non-turbo diesel engine was supplied until March of 79 and used an all gas four-cylinder, gas six-cylinder, 6.3 liter and 600 models, one great place to look for Freon leaks is your front AC compressor seal. This seal kit can be purchased at Napa for a nominal fee of about $25 and takes about an hour to change. That way you won't lose expensive R12 Freon and you won't have to worry about regassing your air conditioner every month or so. Unfortunately, in Lars' case, his front compressor shaft was bent, but at least we knew that the area around the seal was still where the leak was coming from. 
This area is really critical to inspect on cars that have this compressor, and it's an easy do-it-yourselfer job that translates to almost every single Mercedes from the 1960s and early 70s. Our final question happened to come from my friend Todd Rice. Todd is the acting service technician for a large car collection in South Florida, and he's wrangling with another AC issue on a 300 SEL 6.3. His issue involves the expansion valve. For those of you that are really good at reading air conditioning pressures, he's getting high side pressures of 225 and low side pressures of negative 10 inches of mercury. If you have a car with a capillary tube expansion valve, which is basically any Mercedes made prior to 1977, and also the 107 series and 116 series, all the way to the end of production, these expansion valves can act up and they, they can become unresponsive to temperature changes and the pr internal pressures of the AC system so that they fail to regulate them. This valve is usually found under the dash and on 116 and 107 cars it's found behind the instrument cluster. On 108, 109, 114, 115, 113, 111 and 110 cars, it's typically found on the passenger side and very frequently behind the glove box. This valve can certainly cause symptoms like that and very often if you have a full AC system but you're still not getting any cold air, this could be the culprit. These valves are again available at local auto parts stores for very little money and can restore an AC system when somebody tries to guess at what's wrong with it, this can be a very super easy and direct fix where you don't really have to do much else to restore its function. Anyway, thank you for watching. I appreciate you tuning in. And if you have any questions, please send them to info at pierrehidari.com and we will be happy to answer them on the air. Thank you. So much.